just in. Sarah Palin hospitalized. Bill Clinton loses it in an interview, admits he's a murderer. It's this that makes you want to click. Fake news dominated the 2016 US election. We have an epidemic of false information racing around, using social networks as the accelerant. One city in Macedonia was at the very center of it. This is Velas. In 22 years, I was earning more than someone that will never earn in his entire life. And these are the people behind it. It's a huge business, it's a huge industry, it's a huge network. We are taking uh, fake accounts so I can reach more and more people. There is a strategy, there's a cleverness to this. You don't know if it's true or not. I don't know and I don't care. And one fake news producer makes a shocking revelation. Their next target, 2020. Tucked away in the hills of the former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia is the small city of Veles. A place many thousands of miles away from Washington, but whose voices echo right across America. So-called fake news can have real-world... Fighting the fake news. It's fake, phony. False propaganda. For months, I've been wanting to come here. Ever since I heard, over a hundred fake news sites were traced right here to the city. The old factories here in Veles, many now left to rust away, used to make ceramics. Today, it's known locally for something else. Now, it's known as Trump's Veles, famous for its fake news websites. I keep hearing the fake news industry is worth millions of dollars, but walking around, it's clear to see this is not a city paved with gold. In fact, it's a place that feels like it's trapped in a time warp while it simultaneously charges ahead into the digital new world. So it makes me wonder, who are the people behind this supposedly multi-million dollar industry? What are the chances of us getting someone to interview? Can you help us? Never on the case. We find several people in the city connected to the fake news industry, but they're reluctant to talk openly about it. Will any of the people you know be interested in talking to us, be able to talk to us? They are worried about being exposed and their websites shut down. This after Facebook and Google began cracking down on fake news. But it seems the local mayor isn't shy to tell us just how widespread the industry is. Ебе сега стоиме во оваа зграда. Едни како да кажеме, луѓе што држаа еден добар објект, тоа не го работеа тоа. Mm. Е ваш американски систем брз начин за работување на пари. After about seven tabs or so that are open. Just in Sarah Palin hospitalized. You can spot the stories that are really untrue, completely fake. Bill Clinton loses it in an interview, admits he's a murderer. The stories on this particular website are fake, but other websites are actually going further. They are mixing fact and fiction. That is a lie, and that's mixed in with news and the main political page. And someone in the US could potentially be influenced by that. They make you want to click and they make you want to share. At the moment, we're looking to track down some of the websites currently up and running. We want to know what exactly they're writing about. Is it still President Trump? This is the one of the websites that we know comes from Macedonia. It has a link to their own Facebook. The IP address and the IP location says it's Texas. If you look further down, it gives you the address, Velas. I'm going to see if this person picks up. Hello, can you tell me a bit more about your website? It's a news, a news website for now. Yes. Would you call it a fake news website? No. Where do you get your ideas from? Where do you get the stories from? Uh, from other newspapers. And uh, who, who are your readers? Is it American readers? Who are the majority yes. of people? Most, yeah. Mostly American, yes. Do the people that read your website, do they know that your website is fake? And what is the... Um, meaning for fake websites? Well, they're not real news. You're making stories up. 
from news. I make stories from other news. Copy and paste, or do you write no, your own stories? I paraphrase some of them. I didn't copy paste them. Is there any chance that we can meet? No, no. All right, thank you very much. Thank you too. So that, that was interesting. I wasn't expecting him to pick up the phone. In fact, I was expecting it to be a, a fake number. He doesn't believe he's doing anything wrong, but yet again, doesn't want his face or his name to appear. As you can see there, we're not talking about three, four people, 100 people, it's 124,000 people who like his stories. Website owners make their money from advertising. Platforms like Google's AdSense place ads on their sites. Every page visit earns a fraction of a cent, but as you can imagine, it quickly adds up with hundreds of thousands of clicks. Then to drive traffic, fake news producers use Facebook. They post links to their stories in fan groups, often under fake profiles, all in the hope that they will go viral. We spoke to Facebook and Google, who told us they are actively identifying and blocking accounts linked to fake news. But on the ground, producers are adapting, as we learned after a chance encounter with some producers at a cafe. They didn't want to appear on camera. How many Facebook profiles do you have to create in order to get your message out? Uh, if you create uh, Facebook profiles by yourself, yeah. Facebook is going to take it down in yeah. the next 24 hours. So how do you how do you get around that? Uh, you go buy real profiles. Yeah. From Kit, then you change the names to American, American versions. Real uh, profiles exist. Profiles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they just change into American names. Like these uh, okay. small kids. They Teenagers. Had, like two euros before you give them two euros, they give you the profile. It's all about the money. Despite the breakthrough, we got a sense that everyone in this town was protecting each other. But just when we thought our story was going to end there, I get a phone call. This person who produces fake news websites wants to meet on his terms, so not meeting out here. Uh, getting out in the car, uh, they're going to text me the location and uh, let's see how it goes. been waiting for about 40 minutes or so to meet the fixer. Actually, I think he's arrived. Is he here? Let's go. All right, he's here. We are driven out of the city centre and taken to an industrial part of town, all to protect the identity of a man who says he's one of the pioneers of fake news in Velas. So the first office, lights off. Mikhail has arrived. He's logged in to his website, and I've noticed that it's not your own name. No, it's, it's someone just, else's profile. Yes, that, that we are doing all the time. Uh, right. We are faking uh, fake numbers to have fake uh, accounts so I can reach more and more people. Right, so here you're Jessica. A lot of people commenting, but also a lot of people sharing. As, as we're talking, a lot of people here liking your posts. What are you working on now? What are you looking ahead to now? My primary goal is to prepare a site that I, like I was having before, mm. to be ready for the next election um, in America. U.S. election? In the U.S., yeah. How do you prepare for something like that? Sim what are you looking at? Simply, you need to make a million fan page. Like you see, Jessica, it's a fake. Uh, a lot of fake pages, a lot of fake numbers, because I, at the beginning you need to do that to make people like your page. I know how it is to build a big site and I will do it again. I can tell you how much money I have earned in one day. Mm. Maybe it was around two, 2000 2500 dollars at one day. For this kind of money to earning per day, you need to have maybe a fan page more than half a million million people. What makes a good clickable story in your opinion? So you need to have an interesting topic. Whatever Donald Trump is doing, it's interesting for everyone. Even in my country, everything he said, it's worth listening, you know? He's an interesting face. When you have million fans, if you post something, even if it's not interesting, a lot of them will open it just to see what it is, and you will get money. You don't know if it's true or not. I don't know, and I don't care. 
right. because the people are reading. Even if they open, I'm getting paid. Are you proud of what you've achieved? Uh, in 22 years, I was earning more than someone that will never earn in his entire life with the standard that we have in my country. So, yes, I'm proud. You know, if you try and put yourself in his shoes, he wanted to be a lawyer, he had dreams, he had big dreams like any one of us. But he said, well, why would I even spend years studying when I can basically make three, four times that? He is focusing on the next big story, he's preparing his website for the next big story. And the next big story for him is the next US elections. It's not just him behind a computer. There are people who write stories for him, people in the US who he depends on. It's a huge business, it's a huge industry, it's a huge network, and he's just one of hundreds working out of Ellis. Meeting Mikhail has given us a window into the fake news industry in Velas, but we know this goes far beyond him. Later, we bump into the mayor at the opening of a new bar. Here, the alcohol is flowing and the money, quite literally as local tradition dictates, being thrown around. This is what the digital gold rush looks like. Young fake media producers have put Vellis on the map, on the world map. Are you proud of that? Well, top. Real luck was good. I mean, a secret grad saga for awareness. Never knew to have a shit deck, need a Zakon, the Republic of Macedonia, and a precursion. It may be legal, but is it morally right? Yes, because of the ticket and Emma Moral, the political and Emma and Emma. Is there a bigger puppet behind these guys who is influencing them to influence the US election? I almost understand why they're doing it. High unemployment, very little opportunities here in the city. You take a step back and you look at what they've created and how they've managed to sustain it. There is a strategy, there's a cleverness to this. I think what they're doing is plagiarizing. I think they're frauds, but are we to blame for this? Partly so. As long as people in the United States keep engaging, keep clicking, keep sharing, keep liking, these guys will be in business.